Alright, Algebra 1, here we go. Moving into Chapter 7. We're going to talk about zero and negative exponents. Okay? And our essential question is, how can patterns help you simplify expressions involving zero and negative exponents? Okay? Pretty simple topic right here. Uh, let's, let's look at what we mean by zero and negative exponents. When you take zero as an exponent, like a to the zero, it's always going to equal 1. Any number, 4 to the 0, negative 3 to the 0, 5.14 to the 0, they all equal 1. Any number to the 0 power is 1. Period. That's it. Okay? No ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's it. Negative exponents. We don't like negative exponents, so we always want to convert them to get rid of them. Okay? How do you do that? a to the negative n power equals 1 over a to the positive n power. You flip it. If you have some number raised to a negative exponent, just put that number in the denominator. Flip it, okay? And make it a positive exponent. And then deal with it like you, you normally would, okay? Uh, like x to the negative 3 becomes 1, or I'm sorry, 7 to the negative 3 becomes 1 over 7 to the third. Just flip it and change, and change the sign on the exponent. Don't change the number, just change the sign on the exponent. Negative 5 to the negative second power becomes 1 over negative 5 to the positive second power. Okay? So that's what we do, we flip it. And you'll see in another example how we can do it if it's in the denominator. So let's simplify some of these. 9 to the negative 2 power becomes 1 over 9 squared, which is just 1 over 81. No big deal. 5, a to the third, b to the negative 2. The b is the only one to the negative 2 power, so that's the only one I'm going to flip. And I can do that. This is all multiplication right here, so I can do that. I leave the 5a cubed on top, and I just put the b squared on the bottom. Okay? That's the only thing that goes. And notice I change the sign on the exponent. If you get a negative exponent in the denominator, flip it. Just bring it up top and make it a positive exponent. Okay? Pretty straightforward with those. Let's take a look at another example. <clears throat> if you have ax cubed, b or y to the negative 2 power, we want to evaluate this when x is 2 and y is negative 3. So just plug them in. Okay? So we're going to get 3, x is 2, so that's going to become 2 cubed, and y is negative 3. And that's the negative 2 power. <clears throat> Don't forget your uh, PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally when you do this. We're going to take care of uh, our exponents before we go multiplying anything across here. Okay? So I'm going to do this. This is a negative exponent, so I know I'm going to put this down below. So before I do anything, just for the sake of that, I'll do that. Now we've got positive exponents. Now I can just simplify. 2 to the third power is 8. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So I'm going to get 24 over 9. And I can simplify that down. 3 goes into both of them. 8 thirds. You can leave it like that. Or 2 goes in there twice with a remainder of 2. 2 and 2 thirds. And that's it. Okay? Remember, anything to the zero power is 1. And any negative exponent, flip it and make it a positive exponent. Okay, we'll look at examples of that tomorrow in class. We'll get after it then. See you, bye.